Hello and welcome to my studio. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this picture. This type of image is popular as photo art. Almost flat laying composition, there is effectively no background, just subject. With careful consideration to lighting, you can make a mundane subject really stand out. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how I did it. OK, so what I've got here is uh, a tray. This is an old baking tray, uh, which I've filled with um, slow berries. And just to add a bit of interest, I've added some green leaves in there as well. So that is going to be the subject. So to capture that, I'm going to use this uh, full frame digital SLR, which has a 24 to 70 uh, zoom lens on the front of it and a flash sync trigger on the top. This can also control the energy in the studio flashes I'll be using. Now the camera is tethered into Capture One software, so it's easy to see the results as we go along. OK, so the first thing to do would be to compose the image. So I'll just pop this on this tripod. Uh, now with this tripod, I have a geared centre column, so I can actually wind it up to get uh, a bit of height uh, above the subject. Somewhere around there, we'll try for now. So I want to just point that down at the subject, something like that. OK, so with that set, I'll just look through the viewfinder and arrange the subject. Something like that. I might drop this down, actually, uh, just a little bit, something like there, somewhere. Yes, that's a bit better. And just zoom that all the way in to the 70 mil end on the lens. We'll just fine tune the position. So it's something like that. Good. OK, so with that now done, what I will do is turn the camera on, like this. And the software has recognised the camera, so I can go through the settings that I have on the camera at the moment. So it's in full manual mode. I have a shutter speed of 1 250th of a second, which is the flash sync speed for that camera. ISO 100, and at the moment I'm using an aperture of f8. Now that may well change, but it's a good starting point. OK, so with these settings and no flash set, what I will do is grab an image and just make sure we've got no contamination from the house lights. There we go. So you can see from that that it's completely black. So all the light which I add from the studio flashes will be the only light which affects the subject. Right, so... To light this then, what I'm going to do is use a, uh, a fairly large uh, softbox, uh, a three foot softbox, about here somewhere. Here we are. So I have on here a three foot octobox on the end of this uh, studio head. Now I'm using a studio head for this uh, because it's actually uh, quite light and compact. This is a monoblock uh, flash, studio flash. And this is a 500 joule Profoto B1X, uh, battery powered. But it is actually quite bulky and quite heavy. So instead of using that, uh, what I have here is literally just a flash head. And I've got another one just here to show you. So this is just the flash head and a fan. So at the front here we have the modelling light and the flash tube itself. Uh, and all the uh, energy for this comes from the studio pack which I have on the floor down here. That makes this whole assembly quite a lot lighter, so it's easier to uh, get into the correct position. So we'll just place this about here somewhere. There we are. Just pop that up in the air a bit, like so, 
and I'll just plug that into the pack on the floor. There. So with all that now plugged in, uh, what I can do is, using the remote here, I can just turn that on. There we are. And just at an arbitrary energy level, what I can do now is just grab an image and we'll just see what we get. So with those settings, at that energy level, the image is reasonably well exposed. Possibly a little under, but not too far. Very good for a starting point anyway. Uh, but I can see immediately that the um, depth of field that I'm getting here uh, isn't very big. Uh, I think the focus point is also slightly in the wrong place. It's a bit further too far back. So to address those two things, uh, first of all, I will change the aperture from f8 uh, to something a little smaller. So I'll go from f8 uh, to f16. So, uh, to compensate for that change in aperture, what I'll do is add uh, two stops uh, to the uh, energy of the flash. There we go. So with that change, the exposure should be exactly the same. So what we'll do is grab another image, grab it from here, and you can see that the exposure is more or less the same. It's very slightly different. I think that's probably due to the accuracy of the lens rather than the accuracy of the power pack. And as for the focus point, well, yes, it still needs moving a bit, but we've got much more latitude now because I have a much bigger depth of field. Uh, so I'll just move the focus point ever so slightly uh, further forwards. There we go. We'll just grab that again and see what it's like this time. There, that's a big improvement. So this leaf now is completely in focus, whereas before it was a little soft. OK, so now it's time to sort of concentrate on the uh, quality of the light that we're getting. Now that's going to be dependent on the position of this light. So if I for instance, move this further away from the subject, uh, from the subject's point of view, the softbox itself will get smaller. That will give a bit more edge to the light. Uh, so let me show you what I mean. If I just move this backwards to here, and to keep the angle the same, I'll just put that a bit further up in the air like that. more or less, something like that. Now I'll need to compensate um, for the difference in distance by increasing the energy in the light. So I'll add just over a stop of energy to that light. There we go. And we'll grab that again. And I think you can see the difference that we're getting just by that small change. So that's what we had before, and that's what we've got now. And it works the other way around as well. So if I were to move this light closer, then it would also change the quality of the light. So let's just do that. So if I just bring this down, like so. and move that in, like that, there we are. Now this time of course, uh, this is quite a lot closer, so I'm going to need to reduce the energy uh, to take into account the inverse square law. So I'm going to take off two stops. Let's start there. That's one, and that's two. There we go. OK, so now with those uh, changes made, let's grab another image. There we are. So that has really changed 
the way this looks. So this is what we had originally. And then we moved the light further away. And now we've moved it closer. And you can really see the difference between those two. This is a lot fuller and much, much softer. So with that image now captured, it just remains to go into Photoshop and do the bare minimum of post-production. So this is the file opened in Photoshop. So the first thing that I want to do is just make a copy of this so I can edit the copy and leave the camera original alone. Well, the way I like to do that is just to go on to the background layer here and right click the mouse and ask for a duplicate layer. But I want a new document. And we'll just call this Slow Berries. There we go. So now Photoshop has made me a new file called Slow Berries, so I can dispense with the camera original. That gives you redundancy, so that I can edit this file and leave the other one completely alone. OK, so there is very, very little to do to this. Uh, I think I might just make some very small adjustments to the overall density of the image. And with these adjustments, I find it's easier to use the same type each time. Then you get used to the effect that it will give. So I'm going to use a levels adjustment. And basically all I'm going to do is just move the uh, black point ever so slightly further up, somewhere around there. So it's just changing the tone within the image. There we are. So with that now done, I think the only other thing that I would want to do is maybe apply a crop. So I'll click on the crop tool. Now as I'm using this for video, I'm going to use a specific ratio uh, of 16 by 9. There we go. And I think that's uh, pretty good just as it is. So I'm just going to commit to that. And there we have it. So that's my take on photo art. With the use of careful lighting, I've really brought out the texture uh, of the different types of berry uh, and the leaves in the middle really do lift the image. And all in all, I think that's worked rather well. OK, well, I hope you liked watching how I made that image. And if you like watching these sort of things, do click on the other images as they appear. And don't forget to subscribe. Oh, and click the like button. Thank you very much for watching.